here we go today. John 18. And in my studies, the question came up, what is truth? And we got that from John 18 and uh, 35. Pilate is speaking to our Lord and he says, Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered you unto me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto him, I find in him no fault at all. So here is a man, Pilate himself, torn between two opinions. On one hand, they were saying this man was a blasphemer. Um, he deserved to be crucified. And on the other hand, Pilate's like, but other people are saying he was a great prophet. He's done many wonderful things. But it's interesting, what is truth? And for you, each individual, you need to answer that question for yourself. What is truth? Where do you find truth? Um, and I was thinking here, Every year around November 22nd, back in my day, and I remember the day, our president was assassinated on that day, John Kennedy. And with that assassination, and since that time, many, many, many different versions of what people say happened. Who did it? Who didn't do it? How many were involved? How many were not involved? And we keep getting new books and theories. Well, doesn't that sound like the so-called church? The so-called believers? After all, your Bible said, speaks clearly one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Ephesians chapter 4 talks about that. There's one body, a four, four, one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So for about as many different people, we all have different interpretations. Where are you finding truth? Where are you? What is your source of truth? Because after all, your Bible says that there's a certain group of people who don't make it into heaven. And those are called liars. And if you don't know the truth, well, you're either with them or against them. You're a liar. And in, as long as you're in Ephesians 4 as well, you can go down to 11. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and then of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, which is mature. Unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ, that we be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and slight of men and cutting craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So man is not your source of truth. And yet, how many of you <laughs> rely on man? Too many. But speaking the truth and love may grow up in them in all things, which is the head, even Christ. The true worshipers, as the Bible talks about, will worship in spirit and truth. John 4, 23 and 24 tell you that. So what is true? Well, or who is true? You need to come to that knowledge for yourself. And if we go back in John a little bit, I want to point you in the right direction. And as we exit today's study, I want to give you a name that gets you access to that throne that has the truth. Remember, we serve a God who cannot lie. Um, Deuteronomy 32.4 talks about a God 
of truth. Numbers 23 says God cannot lie. 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Well, the son of man is not to repent for because he gave you the truth. He bore witness of the truth. That was his purpose in life. That's your purpose in life. Whether you're called or not to the fivefold ministry, it's still up to you as a believer to bear witness to the truth. Otherwise, you're a liar. And the truth is available. But it's not through man. Um, John 16, the Lord in verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you. We cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Well, whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine. And show it unto you. Why aren't you utilizing that Holy Spirit? That's the only place you're going to find the truth. Why aren't you opening your Bible? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So that you can be built up. The word of God is able to build you up. And make you wise unto salvation. Why don't you utilize it, church? And I say that because many don't. Many of God's people don't utilize spirit and truth. One John, and I, I'm going to be a one John too here, and John does a good dry, job of describing truth and the source of truth. One John two, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it that no lie is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. The Holy Spirit is not going to lie to you. It doesn't have an agenda. It's not trying to build up a following. It's not trying to get into your bank account. <laughs> we have seen such perversions of the gospel out there. It definitely is the end times. It's pathetic, folks. What they're trying to peddle is truth. And we, like many people, like dumb sheep, are led to the slaughter. I know it, early in my walk, I've heard so many different interpretations of the Bible until the Lord challenged me. Well, go find out. The truth is right there. Go find out. And who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is a Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. The devil fights so hard against the truth. He's even got a, He now has a title in these last days, Antichrist. He doesn't want you to know who you are in Christ. He doesn't want you to know that name, which is above every name, Jesus Christ. If any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Your Bible tells you that, Romans 8 9. His spirit bears witness of what, your spirit. What is it telling you? It's telling you the truth. It's telling you who you are in Christ. And then again, it tells you who you not, who you are not, or you know, that person you thought you were. And we're only deceiving yourself. I'm speaking for myself as well. <laughs> he taught me who I am and who I'm not. And if we get on a little farther, the anointing, verse 27, which you have received of him abides in you. You don't need any man to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. Even as you, it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Even as, as you allow that Holy Spirit to teach you. Mark 4, 25, or Mark, I believe Mark 4, 19 talks about with what measure you meet shall be measured unto you. Even as, you want more of the Lord? Well, go seek it out. Go to the source itself, the source of truth. Man is not the source of truth. I know what I'm sharing because the truth has set me free. And the Bible tells you only the truth will set you free. Otherwise, you're in bondage. You're living in doubt, fear. A new home, a new car, a barrel of money that these worldly people are trying to point you at is not going to get you free, freedom. You're, you're still going to. How does, how does that get rid of the, the doubt, the fear, the confusion? God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. You're not going to find the peace of God unless you have truth, and it involves spirit and truth. 
if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He's not a part of his kingdom. It's not going to work. The Holy Spirit is no lie. Um, and even as we go over in, in 2 John here, the second book, 2 John 3, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. God sent a son that spoke the truth in love to his people. And those that operate in love will understand the message. They will get it. They will be able to have the eyes of their understanding enlightened to understand the mystery of the gospel. It's described as a mystery. And you need that revelation of Christ. It tells you that because in verse 7, the warning again, for many deceivers are entered into the world. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is, is coming to flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves. It's time for you to take personal responsibility for your own salvation. You have to work out your own salvation. You can't go up there and point at other people or say, well, he said this or they said that. Or, you know, it's their fault. No, 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 no. That's not how it works, folks. It might work that way on planet Earth, but not up there. No. Look to yourselves. That you lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgress and abides not in the doctrine of Christ, he, he doesn't have God. He can go to all the religious services. You can jump up and down when the music plays and wave at the ceiling and, and call that worship. But if it's not spirit and truth, it's, it's a waste of time. He abides not in the doctrine of Christ. He has not got He that abides in the doctrine of Christ. He has both the Father and the Son. And if they're, they're not bringing this doctrine, why are you giving it Godspeed? Why are you receiving it into your spiritual house? And why are you bidding it Godspeed? Now you become a partaker of their evil deeds. Folks, the truth is out there. Um, 1 Timothy 2, 7. The truth is out there. It's there for the take. It's on the table. That's why the Lord died, so he could send you the Holy Spirit. And then you could see it for yourself because that's your purpose in life, to bear witness to the truth. First Timothy, well, let me go back to First Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved. So that's the first part of the equation. Let's get saved. Let's get you born again and regenerated. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. So you're not done there. Just because you entered into the kingdom, you want to continue in the truth. You want to know the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, my God, we have, again, how many faiths do we have out there? How many different and books that are written, unending? You know, it's funny. I look at people, you know, we've got the Bible, but they don't. They're like little children. They're more apt to go read uh, the book of Enoch or something or some other book that, that tickles their, uh, uh, gets their attention. Or they get caught up in the sons of, they claim the, the giants and angels can't. Oh, they'll read all that crap, which is just what it is. The Bible's very clear on that topic. <laughs> and they claim that angels and women came together. Oh, my God. Hard to fathom. But there's one God, one maniator between God, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained, a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. They got the memo from above. They know who Christ, the Son of God, is. They have the revelation of that mystery of the gospel. It's Christ in you is your only hope of glory. Jesus of Nazareth's only hope of glory was Christ in him. And what a life he demonstrated by being led by the Spirit. And we can go back here, 2 Corinthians 11, 9. And this is where I'm going to finish. Uh, uh, we're, we're headed towards the finish line here, but I want to point this back out. 2 Corinthians 11. I'm going to start at verse 9. Yeah. And when I was, Paul was talking about, when I was present with you and lacked, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren, which came from Macedonia, supplied. And in all things, I kept myself burdensome unto you, and I will keep myself. 
as the truth of Christ is in me. No man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knows. In other words, he wasn't leaning on the people. He wasn't trying to build his own following. He wasn't looking to cash in off the gullible people like I see today and the stuff they support. <laughs> oh, my God. Folks, you might as well just take the money and throw it out the window. At least somebody else might make use of it, and it might go to some good cause instead of some of these so-called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers that were, are getting supported today. The only reason they're still in business is because people support them. People that should know better, people that should know the truth, and people that should be spending the time getting their information from above, from the Holy Ghost. Romans 15 Without, without Christ, folks, there's no truth. And you won't know who you are. You won't know your purpose in life. And he talks about, in Romans 15, 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Well, thy name is quite, has been revealed. The name of Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people know half the equation and they know Jesus after the flesh, but he said, no, no man. Do they know Jesus Christ? The full name. That's why the enemy is referred to as Antichrist. He's trying to keep that keep you in the dark by not knowing the truth. And if we go back a little farther here in Romans 9, 1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. And folks, that's why. There's no condemnation that are in Christ Jesus because I am pure from the blood of all men. I speak the truth in Christ. And in closing, I think of John 1, where the law John 1, well, the word was made 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, people tell me I'm full of it, and that's great, <laughs> but I know what I'm full of, grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Why not go to somebody who knows what they're talking about? Why not go to some, some, the Holy Ghost, who will not lie to you, but will speak the truth in love? And let that truth set you free. God bless, folks. And please, for your sake, start seeking those things which are above.